Hey folks, this is one of my favorite subjects. So this is journalism, which is uh, in this context is basically about creating the space for peace in the world. The Everyone gets into arguments and controversies and hates on each other and there's different sides. And journalism done properly um, can hopefully bring people to the table. Um, as I quoted in my interview yesterday with Kino McGregor, who we'll get to, um, there's that poem by Rumi, like, let's meet in the field, meet in the open field. So people get into camps and start hating on each other. And we can, we've done that for thousands of years and it never ends well. And we can do better. We can work it out. Uh, so this little talk is about the role of journalism versus bloggy, crappy, sort of celebrity focused or trolling or hating a lot of what we're seeing in Instagram uh, or um, various sort of blogs that don't have an ethical foundation. Um, journalism is basically about ethics. If you hate journalism or dislike journalism, actually what you hate or dislike is bad journalism, which really isn't journalism. It's sort of like saying, I hate strawberries because you ate a rotten strawberry. A rotten strawberry you should just throw in the compost. It's not a strawberry. Um, and you should eat fresh, good strawberries. So good journalism should call itself out when it makes mistakes. So. With the John Friend situation, most people don't even know him, right? Really? He was the most famous yoga teacher in the whole world. He was on the cover of the Sunday New York Times about a month or two in my faded memory before this happened, which is I'm sitting with two yoga friends. We're in a restaurant, Shine, in Boulder, and um, our phones go crazy. And at the time, Elephant was sort of the big boy in the yoga world. And... Um, these other two bloggers didn't work with me, but so our phones all went crazy at the same time. And basically it was some like scandalous news about John friend having like sexual something with students. And, um, the two bloggers immediately got out their laptops and blogged it up and got thousands and thousands of readers. I'm sure. Uh, I immediately, um, went to a separate table, uh, just to have my own little private space. And I blogged up that I wasn't going to blog it up but that everyone probably knew what I was not blogging up by now and that I would blog it up tomorrow when I actually had found out some facts. So I never even mentioned his name or any facts because I didn't have any facts. Journalism is about actually doing some, what they call it, like street leather or something like you actually do some work, you pound the pavement, you work the phone. So I contacted everybody on all sides, tried to find out what was going on. And then the next day or two or whatever, put out interviews with John Friend, put out lawyers documents put out all this stuff i'm sort of skipping over some steps but basically i was able to put out some facts about what was going down and i was able to host both sides so in a very simple way people get really confused about this people think journalism should be unbiased right but people also think journalism um shouldn't be unbiased so like if it's climate change people think well journalism should focus on the truth and the science right but in other contexts, people think journalism should be unbiased. So which is it? Well, it's both. First, you should be unbiased in that you host all sides. So if Joe hates Mark, uh, instead of saying Joe is the best and Mark sucks, you get you talk to Joe, you talk to Mark, you get the facts of the case, and then you invite both. That's really important uh, to be able to share their story but you never just share their story because your opinion is not their opinion. So you have to intro it with saying, we're happy to host this opinion by Mark or Joe about Joe or Mark. And here's why it matters to us and our mission. Cause you don't want to get into a sort of drama land too much. Exactly. You want to rise above it and actually say, what's the larger point here. So with John friend, it was about his business. It was about his sexual relations. It was about the worship of, celebrity yoga people, which has only gone crazier since, uh, if that's possible. He basically was like a religious leader at that time. People worshipped him. They put him up on a pedestal. And for that, I blamed them. We're all adults. Um, no one, you know, told me to put anyone up on a pedestal. I make that decision or not. So am I surprised when a, you know, whatever, 45, 50-year-old guy has affairs with his students and he's not married? Um, not particularly. Is it ethical? Not particularly. They were married. Is it their decision? Are they grown women? Yeah. Is there a power imbalance with John Friend? Yeah. So it's complicated. 
Um, and you just lay all that out. You don't try to resolve it too much. You just kind of lay it all out. Um, because resolution often means you're kind of like pushing gray area stuff into black and white and it's not really accurate, you know? Like with Hillary Clinton, for example, there are a lot of reasons to support her. There are a lot of reasons people didn't like her. It's good to lay all that out instead of just saying, she's great, she's evil, right? There's a lot to it. And as a journalist, you're not about to make a resolution because you're not necessarily in it to be liked. Right. So a big part of the journalistic process, as Caitlin, is to be okay or be ready to not be liked. So with John Friend, both sides kind of, both extremes hated me at various times, depending on the latest blog or article that we put up from whoever. Um, one extreme thought I was in John's camp because I was always respectful and nice and interviewed him and blah, blah, blah. But I also asked real questions. And the John Friend side hated Elephant half the time because we were putting up articles by all his former teachers who were criticizing him. So people shouldn't own you, kind of. Um, and at the end of the day, our only loyalty is to society, is to the commonwealth, is to the greater good. And if that sounds sort of idealistic, well, um, you know, I'm guilty, I guess. Uh, and then, so right now we have this Kino McGregor situation. So um, this is going to sound a little bit like Sally hit Susan and then Susan tripped over Rachel and Rachel got mad at Henry. But basically, Kino is a famous yoga teacher, a long time columnist on Elephant. Never met her, but seems like a great lady. Everyone loves her. Then there's her friend, Dana Falsetti, who we've blogged about. She's a, I don't know what the proper term is, but she's a plus size sort of advocate for access for any shape or size or color or what, whatever in yoga. And she's great. And then there's Aloe Yoga, which is this huge yoga apparel brand that sponsors all kinds of um, mostly beautiful yogis and yoginis, many of whom are my friends, and they're fine. And then there's Cody app, which was a yoga class company that got bought by Aloe and Cody, I frankly had never heard of until a few days ago, but they're fine. So Cody and Aloe are in a big fight. They're suing Dana for saying nasty stuff, which I haven't really seen, which is important. You can only say something is nasty, even in a humorous way, if you have seen it. So I haven't seen it. So you have to say alleged, you have to be clear about your language. So they, Dana said something that she didn't like Aloe that they represented just like basically tall, thin, white, perfect, conventionally perfect looking like blonde yogis or something. And Aloe's suing, Aloe's huge. So we're doing this situation where Kino is defending Dana. And so we're hosting both sides. That's super important to offer space to both sides, not just out of trying to be careful and not get sued, um, that's really not journalism's pro, uh, main concern. If you've watched The Post, the recent movie, they're like, we might go to jail, but let's do the right thing. Journalism has a lot of protections in our constitution, in our laws. So as long as you adhere to journalistic principles, you don't say Aloe is evil, you don't say Kino is evil, you say allegedly Kino says that Aloe allegedly did this, or Aloe says that Dana allegedly did, did that. You stick to the facts you know. So how? So I've had stories from Kino and uh, uh, Aloe Cody both, and basically you have to encourage both to be somewhat like dial down the rhetoric and stick to the story and the facts a little bit. It doesn't really help society or the story or any of the readers if everyone's hating on everyone. Um, but at the same time, they're allowed to tell their story in a clear way. Does that make sense? And then, um, but you know, my role as an editor was, I, I do often replace intense words, like someone attacked someone with someone, uh, you know, uh, said that someone had done, you know, you just try to dial the language down because basically at the end of the day, what I hope happens is that everyone gets together, sings kumbaya and you know sucks on lollipops and goes home kind of and watches netflix like let's get through this and let's have this be a happy teaching moment for the yoga community where we can resolve things through mediation and it's not that dana didn't do something or Aloe didn't do something but we can work it out and if we can't work it out in yoga we're certainly not going to be able to work it out in like north korea and 
Trump, right? So, um, what other point? Yeah, what points so have I forgotten? To follow up on that, offering a platform for dialogue from hearing from both sides. Yeah, but and at the same time, both sides, a multitude of perspectives. Yeah, any perspective, and at the same time, not getting lost in, like, we're not refereeing drama. We don't really care about the drama. Yeah. We actually want to stay out of the drama and focus on the what's important. Because if we're just focusing on the drama, then fairly elephant or any journalistic uh, enterprise can be accused of just milking it for traffic. Traffic we like. Traffic is readers. Traffic is our mission. We want people to read us. But at the same time, we want them to read us so that their lives are more mindful and better and society is more less mean and that kind of stuff. So we don't get off on the drama. We're not like when I'm sharing stuff on Instagram or Facebook. So that's one point is how we share these articles on Facebook is mindfully, you know, our mission is the mindful life. So I never would share Kino's story saying, you know, Kino's brave story stabs a heart into the monster that is aloe. That would be suable. I would think that is not cool. Um, uh, even if that's how I personally feel, if I've had way too much coffee and I haven't done yoga that day, that's not appropriate. So, and I don't feel that way. What I feel would be, here's Kino McGregor. So I explain who she is, hopefully, you know, famous yoga teacher, Kino McGregor uh, has a story to tell or something. You know, I just kind of keep it simple and I uh, try to explain a little bit who she is to people who maybe are outside of the choir because people don't know Kino, Alo, Cody, Dana, necessarily. Um, and even if many do, not all do. And that's, you know, if someone, a reader is posting about the, these articles to their Facebook page individually, that whatever they would like to say is fine. But They can say anything in the intro on Facebook, that's fine yeah. to, to our article. That's not our issue. But what we say on our pages is what you're saying. Any other points we wanted to cover? Is that it? So basically, journalism is, number one, you are not biased. You take both sides. Climate change is real. Climate change isn't real. Let's discuss. Let's look at the facts. Let's not attack each other. Let's actually have an intelligent, thoughtful conversation. And then number two, journalism does have views. We look at the facts. We look at science. And we say, after considering both, we have to come down strongly on the side of like reality and science. And, you know, we just had the warmest winter in Colorado in history and blah, blah, blah. So it's okay to have an opinion, but that opinion, like those great Sherlock Holmes quotes that we use in the Academy is based on an open mind and you don't have to have a open mind to, um, uh, lies or, or things that aren't true. Um, but you can still afford to listen without being a jerk about it. Right. Like if you've ever heard someone like try to convince you to, to say you hate uh, spicy food, like, oh my God, you're going to love this Indian restaurant. You got to go to Tiffin. You got to go. You don't have to say, you know, fuck you. Fucking, I hate spicy food. You suck. And then attack them. That would be weird, right? You could just be like, hey, that's cool. But, you know, I don't really like Indian. Thank you. <laughs>